The welterweight division is about to be shaken up with the three belt unification match between Errol Spence Jr. and Jordanis Ugas to kick off welterweight action somewhere in 2022. Boxing's rumor mill for what happens after Spence versus Ugas is starting to gear up, especially in the wake of the latest developments regarding undefeated Duran Boots Ennis, who is likely to be the next mandatory challenger for Errol Spence's IBF world title at welterweight. Then there's Lithuania's Amantis Stenionis, who as the WBA's mandatory challenger just accepted step-aside money so Jordanis Ugas versus Errol Spence Jr. can take place next. Amidst all of these developments at 147, undefeated WBO welterweight world champion Terrence Bud Crawford seems to be left out in the dark once again. Or will 2022 prove differently and will boxing deliver the long-awaited welterweight showdown for Undisputed? And if this bout comes to fruition, will that be between the longtime rivals Errol Spence Jr and Terence Crawford. Hey, what's going on, Ringsiders? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, takeaways, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to the channel. So Errol Spence Jr. will take on Cuban welterweight world champion Jordanis Ugas who currently holds the WBA super title. Not quite the magnitude Spence Jr. versus Crawford has which will be a unification bout between two undefeated world champions at welterweight. However, Errol Spence versus Jordanis Ugas is a unification fight in its own right and an interesting matchup regardless. Jordanis Ugas isn't the most verbose of the welterweight bunch. He definitely can fight though and coming from the communist republic of Cuba, Ugas fights for more than just professional legacy. I'm a fighter inside the ring and outside the ring. People know that I'm a fighter for my country, a fighter against the dictatorship in my country. I fight for the freedom of my people. I fight for the freedom of the political prisoners that are in jail right now. Patria y vida, country and life. That is why I fight what I fight for. In his first step up at welterweight against then WBC world champion Showtime Sean Porter, Jordanis Ugas more than held his own, some argue the Cuban beat Sean Porter. And in his last outing, Ugas outboxed Manny Pacquiao, who obviously was past his best at the time, still serves as a good win for Ugas nonetheless, who ironically served as a last minute replacement for Errol Spence Jr. Which brings us to the truth, or at least how much there is left of it, as Errol Spence Jr. will look to make his first appearance inside the squared circle since December 5th, 2020, against the way past his best Danny Garcia. In the meantime, the unified world champion has been involved in all types of drama outside the boxing ring, one surely begs the question how much of the truth is still left inside Errol Spence. One truth that has touched the service for sure, at least according to some, is the fight most boxing fans have been craving for years and counting. And we heard it all before. Get a belt first, get on the right side of the street. Me and Terrence Crawford this side of the streets. He's just signed with ESPN. I don't fight for ESPN. I fight for Showtime or Fox. You know what I'm saying? Go fight Sean Porter. We saw you at the fight, Terrence Broad Crawford against Sean Porter, man. What do you make of it? Initial reaction a week later. Uh, it was a pretty good fight. I mean, it was entertaining. Um, um, he did his thing. He definitely did his thing. Sean definitely did his thing, too. I feel like Sean is and as hungry as he used to be, you know, contemplating retirement before the training camp and things like that. So, you know, I feel like the vintage con uh, Sean would have did a lot better, but, you know, we got that Sean. Would you... Would you make a Bud Crawford quitting top rank on the spot with Bob Arum sitting right next to him? Oh, his contract up. I mean, get your money, baby. Final message for all the Spence fans. He walked out, didn't speak to anybody yeah. at the immediate aftermath of that. So I caught him, and I was able to get a couple questions in on him. And, um, and I was asking him, hey, because every time I feel like you bring up uh, Bud Crawford's name, kind of like shies yeah. away and kind of leaves us that. But I asked him what his thoughts are. Uh, that he pretty much left top rank on the spot, standing on stage or sitting on stage right next to Bob Arum. He says, hey, go get that money and, you know, kind of left right there and didn't really much react to that. And To a point where Errol Spence Jr. has effectively run out of excuses. Even if Errol Spence Jr. beats Jordanis Ugas, 
Will Spence versus Crawford be next? Will Spence even fight Crawford at all? As it stands now, Spence versus Crawford is playing out like the welterweight version of Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder when both were undefeated world champions, entertaining a fight for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world with crazy money being offered only to be met with clear unwillingness to cooperate from Team Wilder, who chose to take on a different fighter in Tyson Fury with the motive to gain leverage at the negotiation negotiation table with Anthony Joshua, thinking their man would beat a compromised version of Tyson Fury, only to open up a chapter of its own, underestimating his foe for the rematch. I always say these guys have to be perfect. They have to be perfect. I don't, for 12 rounds, I only have to be perfect for two seconds. And then losing twice in a row by stoppage. And what could have been Deontay Wilder's opportunity for ultimate boxing glory to take part in a historical and transcending fight is now diminished, to say the least. It's a lot of things I've accomplished that I don't feel I have to, you know, uh, 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 prove to anyone because I've already proved everything. But should I push forward, give it a go one more time, or should I just retire and focus on the other things that I already have, other things that I want to get into. Mm -hmm. A fate Deontay Wilder stablemate Errol Spence Jr. might find himself in sooner rather than later. And just like Wilder stalled the Joshua fight to eventually shoot himself in the foot, Errol Spence might actually bump into his proverbial Tyson Fury himself. Even if the truth gets past Jordanis Ugas, there are hungrier, fresher, more athletic, dare I say more talented welterweights lining up as Errol Spence Jr.'s mandatory challengers, including undefeated top contender Jerron Ennis. Ambidextrous, slick, and explosive, many boxing observers are eager to make Ennis to be the next or younger version of Terence Crawford. A student of the game, dedicated to perfect his craft, who especially given his current resume, has all to prove for. I love doing this. Like, I don't, I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this because it's all I know. Right. And I'm in here having fun and doing my thing. So when, you, when they know you're fighting a guy like that, they, they're shot with me. So, right. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. And uh, they, they can't keep uh, hiding for too long and I will be world champion. Boots has his eyes on the very same target as the truth had when he was Ennis' age. Yeah, I'm definitely on the radar. I think uh, I'm ready to fight Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, for he'll relinquish his titles and we'll fight in September if they're ready to step up. I did see him box Floyd though, and, and, and um, how I was did there when they first spoke. Can you tell us how that went? I mean, y'all see where Earl at right now? He's world champion. I mean, he, he, you know, he did his thing, so it, it, wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have been, it would have been, if it was the other way around, it wouldn't, be no, it wouldn't have been no story. Mm -hmm. You know, it would have been like everybody else. But when it's, when it's somebody who has been to that level and done that, then, you know, everything that happened in the gym stay in the gym, but you can read between the lines. Mm -hmm. He was giving me, he was actually, he gave me, he was giving me good work. Real good work. <coughs> and he pushed me, made me get myself, he made me get in tip-top condition. And when I got in tip-top condition, I was Floyd Mayweather. But he's a hell of a fighter. So he was very instrumental in helping you sharpen up. Yes, absolutely. I told you the guy was pushing me. <laughs> he was giving me that good work. I said, no, this is what I need. This is the kind of work I need. A young guy that's going to push me. You know, at first I came in, kind of caught me off guard. I said, okay, I see him, I see him. So he made me, um, in training camp, he made me tighten my game up. Made me want to work hard, and that's what I need from young fighters when they come to my training camp. I need them to push me to give me that extra, that, that, that extra, that extra ump when I'm in training camp. And so history repeats itself, just like Errol Spence was to Floyd Mayweather. Jerron Ennis is to Errol Spence in this welterweight era. With all of the mandatories lined up, Spence doesn't have much longer before he has to decide to either vacate one or more of his belts or face one of the next crop of hungry young welterweights. And so should Errol Spence Jr. get past your Dennis Ugas in his upcoming bout, the fight against Terence Crawford, who is now a promotional and network free agent, has to be next for it to be for all of the belts and to at least add some significance to that fight, even though Spence versus Crawford is not as hot a fight as it was a few years ago. But don't get wrong, Errol's a good fight. And if Earl levels up and does his thing, then maybe, but Terrence said he don't even want to fight no more. He said he tried to get Earl to fight because everybody was talking about it and Earl won't take the fight. So he said he don't want them. So it's going to be hard and that's why he's boxing because we don't get these fights when they're at the pinnacle. I think Earl coming off a of surgery wouldn't be a good idea to take on Crawford right now. You know, uh, I used to give the edge to Earl, but I just, I think right now I give the edge to Crawford. But, you know, 
We'll see. We'll see if it even plays out. Given Errol Spence's current physical and psychological condition, how much fight Errol still has left in him? The way Team Spence has maneuvered their fighter's career in the last years, and given Errol Spence's personal attitude towards the Terence Crawford fight, critical boxing minds might be just for not being persuaded to think differently about a potential Spence versus Crawford fight coming to fruition anytime soon. Errol Spence was right there watching this fight. As soon as the stoppage happened, he walked out. What was your message to Errol Spence tonight? He was at my fight? Yeah. Now that boy said he wasn't going to never. He don't never be at my fights, but now he at my fights. And it's not just up to Errol Spence. It may take one to join the dance, yet it takes two to tango. Of course I want the fight. I tell everybody that. I always say, with or without him, I'm going to the Hall of Fame. When you look at all the things that I've accomplished in the sport of boxing, people that's in the Hall of Fame didn't even accomplish that. You know, so I was, I just tell people I don't need him, he really need me. So boxing fans can only speculate or at best hope that 2022 will be the year Errol Spence Jr. finally takes on Terrence Crawford for this generation's most significant fight at 147, preferably for the first undisputed welterweight world championship in the modern day four bell era. These are just my thoughts on Spence versus Ugas, Spence versus Crawford, Jerome Boots Ennis, and the current welterweight picture. What are yours? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of content and you have haven't already don't forget to subscribe give a thumbs up and hit that notification bell it helps out the channel a lot i.e inspire us to make more quality content for y'all as always thank you so much for your support and welcome to ringside story now if you've done that already you're amazing we already know that you are the true undisputed world champion till next time ringsiders this is your host boxing's objective observer with ringside stories thanks for watching and have a legendary day